on Australia's business channel. This is Media Week. Good afternoon and welcome to Media Week. Ahead, Rupert Murdoch in Australia meeting key staff as former employees accused of phone hacking face trial in the UK. More radio moves with just a month left on the ratings year and the winners of the Maggie Awards, just as Foxtel's magazine gets an overhaul. But first, the annual ad rate negotiations are underway, as we know, and that means the battle for advertising dollars ramps up. SBS is the latest broadcaster to unveil its 24 program this week. About 80% of SBS funding comes from the government, the remainder coming from advertising, sponsorship and content and merchandise sales. So how are our relations with the new government progressing? And what's the outlook for the commercial revenue stream as well? Well, we're joined this week for Media Week by SBS Managing Director Michael Ebert and, of course, our co-host for Media Week, James Manning, the editor and publisher of Media Week magazine. Welcome to you both and uh, particularly to you, Michael. Thank you for joining us. So you're releasing the details uh, this week of the 2014 programming. There's 33 per cent more Australian content. So where are you getting that extra money from? So we were really fortunate uh, to federal budget cycles ago in May uh, 2012. The budget, the federal government gave us a really good boost to our funding which we were desperately in need of. And that money has really helped us completely overhaul the organisation and what we're able to offer our audiences. And you know, increasingly Australians want to see more Australian content and this gives us an opportunity to be able to increase our Australian locally made content to really focus on our charter content uh, and, and make more content here which is terrific. The, uh, yet to, there'll be some future drama announcements, I think, but your, your big uh, program earlier this year was uh, Better Man, which was your sort of first time back in that space, if you like. Yeah. Perhaps didn't get the audiences it deserved, because it was a really good show. Do you need to be a regular player in that drama space, do you think, before the audiences will perhaps come there regularly? Um, look, we're, it was the first time in four years we'd done a drama, so it had you know, taken us a while to build that. Um, the, the audiences were fairly okay for such a tough subject. It was a really difficult uh, drama for us to uh, get across. And it was a very sad ending, of course, in Better Man with the last Australian that was hung in custody. Um, so we've been really focusing over the last couple of years and building our foreign drama slot. And so Australians and, and our audiences know that we're good at that sort of drama, all the Danish dramas, the Norwegian dramas, etc. And so now we're tr going to try and complement that with more Australian drama uh, with this increase in funding. So when you put all, all that together and you, you're talking about 2014 mm. programming, what is the pitch to the market? And importantly, yeah. who are you actually marketing to? Yeah. Who, is the, who is the pitch focused on? Yeah, look, from an advertiser's perspective, it's an important part of SBS now. We are a hybrid funded broadcaster and a lot of Australians don't realise that there's actually more hybrid funded broadcasters around the world than there are models like the ABC and BBC. Mm. So it's not unusual for a public broadcaster to have uh, commercial and advertising revenues. Um, and our pitch really is that we, we have five minutes an hour of advertising on SBS. So from that perspective, from an advertiser's perspective, there's a, a lot less clutter on SBS. And our audiences, when surveyed, have a much higher recall of the ads as well. And so that's, you know, those two things alone are very appealing to advertisers. But we're also now able to target more of the demographics that we want to as well in terms of reaching out to new audiences through SBS2. So this year in April we relaunched SBS2 uh, focusing on the younger demographic which we traditionally you know, weren't uh, getting and we've had a 70 odd percent increase in our younger demographic, our 16 to 40, 45 demographic. So strategically it was right on the money and we're really pleased with that. But one of the upsides of that, of course, is it's also incredibly valuable to advertisers as well. Um, now, that's absolutely not the reason we did it. We wanted to be able to increase our reach. And one of the ways of increasing our reach was getting audiences that we don't engage with traditionally on our main channel on SBS1. Yeah, the, um, I think you published the figures in your annual report, but how much of the revenue do you generate yourself? I think you talked about 80%. Um, is, that, is that right, that split, and how much bit, does bit that equate for? Yeah, so... Okay. Um, we, we have about 160 million from the government. Um, we generate about another 100 odd million. So it works out to about 35% of our money is uh, of our total funding. So SBS, uh, the annual report will show that this year we'll probably spend around $335 million. Uh, and about 35% of that will come from uh, commercial sources. 
of the hundred odd million dollars, um, more than fifty percent of that would be television advertising, and our other commercial operations would include things like the two pay TV channels that we supply and operate for Foxtel, World Movies and Studio, our arts and entertainment channel, and that obviously brings us in commercial revenues, but also our DVD, books, magazines, things like our Feast magazine is is incredibly popular uh, and has got a growing subscription base. Um, and that so does West well. media published that for you, I think, as that's part right, of the PMT. Group. Yeah. That's right, and um, you know that that's something that really touches really well on what we do with our food genre, which is a very important genre for us. Because of course, at SBS, we don't just talk about food in terms of cooking competitions. Ours is all about a cultural journey uh, back into the countries and the the meaning behind a lot of the dishes and so Feast complements a lot of what we do on television as well. Yeah. You can talk sport maybe as well because uh, this has been something big uh, since you've arrived at the long term rights secured for the Football um, World Cup and also the mm. Tour de France. Yeah. Was it a financial stretch? We know how um, how expensive broadcast rights are now in Australia. Yeah. How do you make it, make it pay for itself? Look, look I think live sports is incredibly important for any network um, and we recognise that very early on. Um, and so getting a 10-year deal for the FIFA World Cup for the next three World Cups was incredibly important for us and we have that exclusively on SBS and also things like the Tour de France doing a 10-year deal for that. We just announced that earlier this year. So those things set us up really well with sport, with all our other sports assets around things like the UEFA Cup and all the other cycling that we do and there's a whole lot of uh, different countries that we go to for the cycling but also we're now doing things like women's netball in Australia which as a public broadcaster is incredibly important that we do some women's sport as well now we don't do that obviously for commercial reasons we you know that's not a, a profitable venture for us but I think it's still very very important on the World Cup side and particularly with the A-League now being able to have domestic sports is really important for us and so far this season we're off to a great start with our partnership with Fox Sports and the audiences have been there and we're really pleased about that. It's also something that is very, very attractive from an advertiser perspective and we need those commercial dollars to be able to pay for those rights. And so that was a bit of a stretch to answer your question, uh, but we did a lot of modelling around that and around what the audiences would be and what we could afford to pay. Uh, and we were very fortunate in being able to come to a, a good deal with the FFA and Fox Sports to be able to bring one game a week uh, to, to Australian viewers. Uh, new government in Canberra. Mm. What does that mean for SBS? Is the you know as a conservative government more likely to favour the commercial broadcasters? Look a bit harder at your budgets, and what's your relationship like with uh, Communications yeah. Minister Turnbull? I think SBS has been incredibly lucky in its whole history. It's had a very bipartisan approach to um, to, to all our issues at SBS, and um, you know I think the change of government really for us won't impact us that much. We're very fortunate that Tony Abbott has already said that he doesn't plan to cut either the ABC or SBS, but what he wants to do is ensure that we're very efficient in how we're run as an operation. Um, given that SBS has been always you know, behind the eight ball in dollars and, and you know, relatively underfunded, we've always been very, very efficient in a lot of the things that we do. And so from my perspective, I'm not concerned at all about any of the change of government. In fact, I, I know that um, you know, our Minister Malcolm Turnbull is very supportive of the organisation and as long as we can keep doing uh, everything as efficiently as we can, I think we're in good shape. Although a change of government, you get more and more lobby groups kind of making their way into Canberra to try and show their face. Do you have to spend more time there? Or no, it's, I mean, it's we've, really, been, we've you know, been talking to all sides of Parliament uh, for a long time since I've been in the role for two and a half years. So the relationships are there, so it's not like we've got to re-establish yeah. a lot of the relationships. So. Um, I think it's great we're, we're in a good place right now. I mean, a lot of people talk about the TV, but you do a lot of other things as well. The radio is one of your sort of little jewels, I guess, that yes. runs in the background for a lot mm -hmm. of people. But for um, people who English language isn't, you know, kind of naturally to them, mm -hmm. you get a lot of listeners there, don't you? I think you've got something like eight different streams now. Yeah, um, our radio is a big part of the business. It um, is important, particularly also from an advertiser perspective. You know, our ad revenues on radio has increased 10% year on year last year and we're very proud of that. Um, we broadcast in 74 different languages and when you look at Australia's uh, demographics now, 
we actually have more Australians today who speak another language. It's actually double the number of people who speak another language today than was when SBS was first started 30 odd years ago. So our cultural complexity is enormous in Australia now and so our job really is far from over. We've still got a lot to do in communicating with those Australians and giving them Australian news and current affairs in a language that they're really comfortable with and uh, talking about community issues and the things that we do on radio. And so that's a, an important growing part of our business and we do that across three radio networks. Um, but also this year we've launched uh, three digital radio stations for younger uh, low listeners, particularly around music. So we've got Pop Asia, which has been incredibly successful for us. And it's been so successful, we've actually turned it into a TV show. So we've got Asian video hits mm. uh, on the weekends. And, um, you know, that's really had a, a terrific audience that has surprised us because the audience isn't just Asian kids. It's a real multicultural mix of faces that when you look at some of the comments on social media, uh, it's been very successful. And the other two are Pop Araby for Arabic-based music and Pop Desi for Indian and Bollywood-style music. Again, it's a great way to reach out to younger audiences, something that SBS has traditionally found difficult to do. So rich and so diverse what you're doing across yeah. SBS. Thank you so much, Michael, for joining us on, on the show today. Pleasure. Thank Thanks you. very much. Thanks. And do stay with us here on Media Week because coming up, the winner of the magazine Cover of the Year Award.